right back. Sorry for missing you guys last week and the week before that and this is awkward. Do I address it? Do I not address it? I'm gonna address it. So as like everybody knows by this point, uh, we have an AdSense problem on YouTube, meaning that nobody's getting ad revenue. I've already talked about it. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore because YouTube owes me nothing as a content creator. So the reason that I've been out for the past couple weeks is that rather than sitting in my bedroom floor and crying on camera about how I need you guys to pledge to my Patreon or I'm gonna close my channel, whatever that actually means, I decided to do what adults do and I got a full-time job. Yeah, I got a job. <sighs> what? And no, it's not really what I want to be doing every day, but it's not terrible and I'm grateful that I have it. So for the past few weeks, I've actually been in training for said job, which means that it hasn't allotted me a whole lot of time to be with you guys. But I'm here now and I'm here to talk to you about some crazy paranormal slash conspiracy kind of things today. So let's get into it. Today we're going to explore one of my favorite paranormal stories in the United States, which would be the Mothman. This is actually a really scary real life thing that totally actually happened. So if you're sensitive, if you get scared really easy, this video may not be the one for you. I did make a video on how Shakespeare never existed, which you could go check out instead of this, but you've been warned, so no trigger comments. So our story begins in a small town called Point Pleasant in West Virginia. The year is 1966. Now all this stuff started when four young people were out on a double date. Their names were Steve and Mary Mallet, and Roger and Linda Scarberry. The two couples were driving in one car around the McClint Wildlife Preserve on Route 62 when they saw something in the road in front of their car that would change their lives forever. The couples described a creature which was essentially the shape of a man, but it was at least seven feet tall. The thing was black in appearance with large glowing red eyes and what appeared to be wings. The thing actually flew away after a second, but the way it flew is the strange thing. Rather than flying in sort of a linear pattern like birds do or airplanes, it flew straight up. It levitated from the ground straight up as if it was jumping or being lifted straight into the air. So the couples, rather than pursuing this creature, sped off back to town. They hightailed it out of there. But a few miles later, they saw the thing again, and it was flying behind them as if in pursuit of their car. So the driver of the car said that he started speeding away, trying to get away from this Mothman creature. He said he was driving up to 100 miles per hour and he still couldn't lose it. Only when they entered the city limits and the area around them started to get more lit because of street lamps, did the creature disappear finally and give up its pursuit. Naturally, the authorities dismissed the accounts of the young teenagers. And the report was actually published in a local newspaper, but as an entertainment piece. The funny thing was, this wasn't the first sighting of the Mothman. Before this, two gravediggers reported to authorities that they had witnessed a large, moth-like, humanoid creature in the trees above them while they worked in the graveyard one night. Now in the months following these sightings, family pets went missing, strange UFO encounters were happening, people reported hearing strange noises outside of their homes, and when they went to check it out they would be greeted by this tall winged humanoid thing and its massive glowing red eyes. One report was that of a woman who was carrying her infant daughter to her car when she was bombarded by what we know now as the Mothman. And she was so startled that she actually dropped her child and then she fell on top of her to protect her. And then the thing just ascended into the air. So because this thing was being seen by so many residents in Point Pleasant, it started to get quite a bit of media attention. One reporter named John Keel comes into play here. Look at the doggy. John Kale took up a personal interest in the Mothman and began traveling back and forth to Point Pleasant to interview the people who had seen it. And he started noticing tons of strange activity in the town. Mostly the presence of men arriving in the town wearing black suits and arriving in black Cadillacs that were very interesting. This part scares me worse than anything. Ugh. These men appeared to be identical to one another in fashion and also in facial features. They had very strange mechanical voices and strange 
ways of saying things, strange phrases they would use, and just, oh, just so creepy. These men, of course, are now known as the men in black. And they would appear in the town and drive up to people's houses, ask them very odd questions, and then they would even ask to photograph the townspeople's children. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't talk to strangers and don't talk to men in black, kids. Oh, gosh, that's too much for me. And then John Keel himself personally started experiencing very strange things. Okay, so it started with odd phone calls to his home. And by the way, he lived in New York in the time. Again, this is in the 60s, way before cell phone usage. And this was back when we had answering machines and landlines. And he was getting the oddest messages once he got back home from Point Pleasant. All of which would be very strange messages spoken in very flat, mechanical voices. Some of it appeared to be gibberish, and some of it seemed to be prophecies. One of these messages was regarding a Dr. Martin Luther King, and it was stating that he was going to be shot in the neck. And then another instance occurred actually in Point Pleasant when he was speaking with one of his interviewees, and she became confused, stating, I don't understand. I told you all of this yesterday. Well, at least I told your assistant all of this yesterday, to which he responded, I don't have an assistant. And then the witness explained to him that she was approached by a tall, blonde woman with a strange looking face and a very flat, mechanical voice who asked her questions. And that woman claimed to be John Keel's secretary. Mm, it's insane. <laughs> and he began to think that something terrible could be about to happen in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. He began carrying a huge gas mask with him when he went to work in Point Pleasant because Point Pleasant has several chemical plants and it was his prediction that one of them would malfunction and perhaps even explode. And it wasn't just him, a lot of the townspeople had strange premonitions of things that were going to happen. And they were also receiving the strange phone calls as well. It was later confirmed by John's phone company that there was a tap on his line, but they could never figure out where it was in the line or who it was going to. So someone was definitely listening to his phone calls, but I mean, was it the Mothman or was it someone else? Was it the men in black? The strangest thing to me is that it didn't just happen to John when he was in New York or in Point Pleasant. It happened to him all over the country. He traveled around all the time to do different articles for different companies and every hotel he went to, his phone would ring and he would hear the same voice. Now all these sightings around the Mothman and all these strange happenings continued for a whole year. It all came to a head in December 1967, when allegedly this photo was taken. And a few hours later, the Silver Bridge, which is depicted here, collapsed into the Ohio River, killing 47 people that were citizens of Point Pleasant, all of which were connected in some way to the Mothman reports and sightings. After this tragedy, the Mothman was not seen again in Point Pleasant, and John Keel went on to write the book The Mothman Prophecy, which is now a movie. The town of Point Pleasant actually erected a statue representing the creature years later. So the general consensus is that all along, the Mothman was actually a benevolent entity that was sent there as a warning, trying to warn the people of Point Pleasant of what was about to happen about the catastrophe with the Silver Bridge. Most people think that the Mothman was actually an angel, and people have claimed to have photographed him in many other cataclysms around the world, even 9-11. The biggest issue with the Mothman is that we have no idea of what it was. My opinion, and it's crazy, is that this was a case of an extraterrestrial on Earth. Told you, it was crazy. And I mostly get that from the eyes, the red glowing eyes, and the flight method. The fact that he was able to basically defy gravity and shoot up at will. In my mind, the description of the Mothman's body is more a description of maybe a suit that another being was inside of. Rather than wings, in my mind, since he never really flapped them, he didn't fly like a bird, I look at the wings maybe more as like thrusters or like a jetpack kind of situation. I don't know, maybe that sounds silly, that's just how it works in my head. A lot of people have also said that it might be a time traveling thing where like the reason he was warning people about the Silver Bridge was that he'd already lived through it and he came back in time in whatever suit he was in. 
uh, to warn the people of Point Pleasant about it. Um, I don't know, I'm not really sure. Or maybe it's both, maybe it's a time-traveling alien where time is perceived completely differently by this race of being than humans have to perceive it. Maybe time isn't linear, I don't know. I, I'm just gonna throw myself down that rabbit hole now. But I want to know what you guys think about this. It's a pretty spooky story, in my opinion. And I'd like to know what you think. Do you think that it was an angel? Do you think that it's some creature that we don't understand? There have been reports of Mothman-like creatures all over the world for many, 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 many years, even today. So maybe it is some sort of prophetic creature that's there to warn us when bridges collapse. I don't know. I mean, and maybe it's an alien. Maybe it's a hoax, even though that sounds kind of odd. That's no fun. Um, maybe it's a time-traveling human. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I love you guys so much. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, to those of you who are new here, I noticed I got some new subscribers. Welcome. I hope you stick around. Um, I do have a Patreon account if you guys want to donate maybe a dollar, maybe two, uh, to support the research and the stuff that I do. Let me know, Patreon subscribers, let me know what you guys want as a gift. I would like to give you guys something special in return for what you guys are giving me. I think that's really, really important, so let me know what you guys would like. Um, my social media will be listed below. It'll be super fun. And if you guys have any suggestions for what you would like to see next week, you know what to do. If you guys want to contact me, Facebook is a really good way to do it. I respond very, very quickly. And to end, thank you to Jeremiah, who gave me the kick in the ass that I needed to film this video today. You're awesome. Bye.